Dude, my contractor sucks. One of the most common things I've been hearing lately in our forum chat for members. Listen guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about the problems with the current renovation marketplace and the solutions, okay? So if you're in the market to hire a contractor or you're doing a mix of DIY and contracting, this video is very, very important because the market has changed dramatically in the last couple of years. We're gonna talk about the problems with it. Let's just jump right into the problem. Um, yeah, people retire. Right? A large majority of the workforce is retired, and the same time that that's happening, the large majority of the workforce that should be entering the workforce, not in the mood to work. Imagine that. So here's the deal. We have a new generation of folks that have decided that blood, sweat, and tears is not a good way to make a living. At the same time, the market conditions are such that blood, sweat, and tears is the best job on earth. <laughs> Figure that one out. Right now, if you're in the trades, you can make almost double what you were even five years ago. You can make more than most professions. And because you're running your own small business, you can write off all your expenses. It is a really lucrative business right now. And because the demand is so high for the skills, they're charging insane amounts of money. So let's just dive in. We'll break down all the problems, okay? And we'll talk about some of the solutions and what you as a homeowner can do to protect yourself. And we're going to talk about the gap. What is the gap? How did it form? And how it's getting filled? But before we can understand all the problems, we need to go here. The situation has created a huge talent gap in the marketplace. That means there's three things that we got to take a look at. Number one, great contractors are going to be hard to come by. In most jurisdictions, the, the laws of the state and of the cities require general contractors to register, to license, to have insurance, put, even put up bonds, all of this kind of thing, okay? And so there's, it's very regulated to protect you as a homeowner from fly-by-nighters or out-of-state labor taking advantage of like uh, natural disasters and, and a temporary increase in demand for workers. And it's designed to protect the homeowner, all right? The second thing that's going on, and we got inflation now. So that's a brand new problem in the mix, okay? We're all dealing with the inflation issue. And generally what that's doing is it's actually solving some of the problem because it's getting rid of people's desire to renovate and pay contractors. That's somewhat helpful, but at the same time, half the homes in North America are still built before 1980. And there's a huge crisis still going on with not enough housing. If we have all of these older houses, they still need to get work. And we have fewer people to do the work. And the prices are getting more expensive. And there's a labor gap. As a homeowner, the third thing that you're seeing is that contractors are actually changing their scope of work. They're, they're setting out their own business model. You'll hear this a lot right now. Um, last time I was in Florida, I had a contractor over to my brother's house to do a quote for a bathroom renovation. And I went on Angie's list and we did a, all the forms. We wanted a custom contractor. The guy shows up, he's there as a salesman. And we're like, we want this and this and this done. He goes, oh no, we won't move any walls. We won't do any custom work. All we'll do is remove a tub and tub surround and replace it with a brand new tub and tub surround. And it's gonna be about 8,000 bucks. <laughs> and that's the only scope of work that they're willing to take on as a contractor. And that was the only contractor available from that list in that region. And this is happening all over North America. Contractors are saying, hey, this makes a lot of money. This is what it's gonna cost. You have to now fit your project into their mold instead of them customizing their project around what you want. Now listen, I wanna be real clear here because I'm not a contractor basher, okay? But the fact is this, contractors are a lot like doctors and lawyers. They're constantly practicing and they're constantly developing. And products on the market and processes are constantly changing and the rules are changing, the codes are changing. And so you have to understand that when you're talking about contractors, although the world likes to vilify people that work with their hands, right? Because they never went to school. The truth is, is that there's an immense talent, immense time and, and, and dedication and commitment to their trades to develop the skills to be very good at what they do. So right now, I'm just gonna show you a real quick demonstration and I'm gonna demonstrate the gap. So I whipped together a quick little board here. I know it's pretty crude, but stay with me. Um, this is the labor market and what it looked like five years ago. And there was an even proportion of people in every level of the development process of their skills. So you start down here with laborers, generally people that are in the market from zero to 10 years. Okay. And, and they're the shovels with the grunts, right? They're the new guy on the scene and they're just learning how to use the tools, how the flow of the work site works. They were learning about their safety protocols and how not to kill anybody. And they're generally just there to do all of the real physical work and they're watching and they're learning and they're absorbing, okay? They might even be in a, um, uh, a, a program where they're apprenticing, okay? And generally speaking, the same number of guys are joining the labor force every year for like the last 100 years. <laughs> and it's been really consistent. Now, the next step up, of course, is the installers. 
Now these guys have learned some basic skills. They're competent with the tools now, and they know how to, let's say, just lay tile or just install drywall, or they know how to assemble furniture or they, some other task, okay? And so they're task-oriented, and they've got some skills, and they might be in the trade now for five to 15 years. And depending on ambition and a whole lot of other factors, they may settle in there and be quite happy, going to work Monday to Friday, putting in the 40 hours, doing a job and coming home and hanging out with their family, you right? The next level here are the renovators, okay? These are the guys that have been around long enough, they've developed multiple skills, and they may or may not have a, a trade license, but they might be licensed as a renovation contractor for residential or commercial in your state, okay? And they, generally speaking, a lot of people stay here in their career because they don't want to go back to school. They don't want to get a trade license, which is the next level, and they don't want to become GCs because they've decided that that's a responsibility and a lifestyle. The phone never stops ringing. There's a lot of risk involved. They're happy here. You know, they just do contracts. They got a small crew, maybe one or three guys, and they do what they do. Or they might even sub out to the GCs, okay, become subcontractors. Now, then you got the tradesmen, and there's been lots of talk about, oh, we're short on trades. The reality is we've been short on the whole cycle, but we're short on trades is very common and popular. They love to advertise the fact that trades are good paying jobs. All of these are good paying jobs. All right, let's just be honest. And then you got the GCs. Now, when I was in the business, I was a renovator. I did not have an actual trade license. And I didn't go into being a GC because I didn't want all the headaches that went with it. I kept my crew small, I did custom work. Now, GCs would hire a guy like me every once in a while to do custom work on, on part of his project. Or I would take on all kinds of contracts myself. Now, here's the problem. When these guys started retiring, and these guys started retiring, and these guys started retiring, everybody else now bumps up, okay? So now the installers, they've all become renovators. So there was a huge gap right here. Now instead of 10 to 30 years, the average experience as a renovator is only five years. So the average age of the renovation contractor is five years in the business. It's unacceptable, it's not enough. Do you know that in order to get a, a license to be a renovation contractor, a lot of states you have to have four years of actual competency. Because you gotta be competent, right? If you're practicing something, developing skills, you gotta be at it long enough that you know what the hell you're doing. Unfortunately, there's not enough regulation as far as the training processes are concerned. Not enough guys go to, go to the, the courses that the, the products that are on the marketplace are teaching to know how to use them. So here's where we run into problem. Dude, my contractor sucks because you're getting guys who are new in the marketplace pretending to be professional contractors. All right, now let's talk about this a little bit more in depth about what you can do to protect yourself. Or now I wanna be really clear because this vacuum that was created for labor, I wanna just say this, most contractors are out there are just, they're honest, hardworking guys, all right? And a lot of them have lots of skill. And you're gonna find that the ones that have the most skill and the most history, the most, most reputation are gonna be booked off into a year, year and a half, two years down the road. The ones that are available, generally speaking, are gonna be the guys of, well, either a lower quality, lower reputation, or they filled that vacuum and they're new in that level of responsibility as far as contracting is concerned. As a homeowner, you've got to understand that that's who's in your door. If you make a phone call and somebody says, yeah, I'll come by sometime this week and we'll do a talk and a walk and a quote, who's showing up? It's not gonna be one of these guys that was a, a contractor like a renovation licensed pro who's now moved up to a GC. It's not gonna be a seasoned pro. It's gonna be somebody who's young, who's maybe 25, 30 years old, been around for a little bit, and now he's taking a big bite. And you know, and I gotta applaud the, the attitude and the desire, you know. But guys, if you're one of these guys who's moving up, do yourself a favor and try to minimize the scope of work and the projects you're taking. You don't have to take every job that comes along just because it's available. Right? Try to stick to some area of expertise that you've already developed over the years. Stick to that area of expertise and then slowly grow out, okay? But go do yourself a favor, contact your suppliers. They all have local reps. The reps have got information as to when you can get training and get some training, okay? Expand your understanding. You're practicing, you're growing, you're learning, I get it, but you're gonna take on more responsibility than you used to and you better have the knowledge to go with it. Now homeowners, the reason I'm getting comments about my contractor sucks is because you're not aware that you're hiring people that don't have as much skill to do the same job as what you were accustomed to five years ago. And what you're doing is you're saying, you're price shopping, right? Because the guys who know what they're doing, 
they're expensive. If you're a homeowner and you're price shopping for your renovation, you're gonna end up paying for it twice because you're gonna hire the first guy, you're gonna get all upset, you're gonna become a member, you're gonna send me pictures of what he's up to, I'm gonna say, yo, he doesn't know what he's doing, you're gonna fire him, and then you're gonna have to hire somebody else to come in and do the same job a second time. <laughs> and that's an expensive way to get a contract done. It'll end up costing you more than if you wait. Wait for the guy who can do it next year. I know it's ugly, but it probably still functions and you can wait. Or your best option to deal with this right now and moving forward, because this is not a this year problem. It's not a next year problem. This is the problem we're going to have for the next 15 to 20 years. Unless the younger generation wake up and realize that they can make over six figures a year running their own little construction operation or getting in the trades and getting licensed until they come to realize that it's a better paying job than just about anything else in the market and they're not afraid of blood, sweat, and tears. Till that happens, your best option is to do it your damn self. DIY is a definite option and here's why. As a DIYer, you will take the time to do things right one step at a time, be happy with everything you do as you go along. You'll know the end from the beginning. You're not gonna get confused. You're not gonna rush. It's your house. You can take better care of it than anybody else can. And yes, it's gonna take some time and maybe it'll take a few months to do a project instead of a couple weeks. But at the end of the day, if the only option that you have is wait two years for someone to do it and pay 20 grand, or you can do it yourself in a few weekends for two grand, for me, it's a no brainer, right? DIY is an amazing option. So two more quick notes I just wanted to get across to you guys. Don't go into a contract with wishful thinking, going, wow, I hope this young guy has got enthusiasm, he's full of piss and vinegar. Maybe this guy is going to be great. And don't just say, I hope he's great, and then, you know, like it's not clicking your heels through times and going, leaving back to Kansas. This, this is real life. These are contracts. And if you sign a contract with somebody and he does a substandard job, you're in a world of hurt right? So consider the DIY option, guys. Do it yourself, all right? Consider joining our membership program because you can send me pictures of your project. I can do consultation. We've got live streams to help you out. We've got video archives. We've got the entire project from A to Z, three, four hour videos if you need it. You can get your training right here on this channel. And if you're going to hire a contractor, for God's sake, do yourself one more favor. Make an appointment to go visit them on their current site and talk to the homeowners at that house. Okay, make sure he's organized, make sure they're clean, make sure they're on time, make sure they're there working all the time, make sure that that client is happy and that the quality of the work is up to the standard that you expect because I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of different qualities of work out there. And if someone who was an installer was working in the lower budgets for a long time and he was getting five star reviews as an installer and now he's a renovation contractor, the expectation has just gone right through the roof as to the quality and you might be looking at 30 reviews of him as an installer, but now he's playing a brand new game, right? It's kind of like a baseball, right? Sometimes the guy that's batting 400 in the minor leagues is just lousy when he goes to the pros. Just saying. Protect yourself out there and know what you're getting, all right? Cheers to next time.